Good afternoon and welcome to Middle Grade Monday. I'm Lori and I am the teen librarian at Manlius Library coming to you from the children's room and I have four fabulous new middle grade books and a fun art activity. Let's get started with the books. First up, If We Were Giants by Dave Matthews and Cleet Barrett Smith. This one is actually found in the teen room and I don't normally put teen books into the Middle Grade Monday. I save those for Teen Book Tuesday but this one is perfect for grades four to seven. So I thought I'd tell you about it. It is about 10 year old Kira. She has to summon the courage to face her own mistakes before she can help save her peaceful community from a gigantic threat. Kira lives in an idyllic community hidden for generations inside a dormant volcano. When she and her little brother make an unwise choice that help bring the violent, spindly, gray skinned takers to her community, with devastating results, Kira feels responsible and she leaves the volcano. Now, four years later, Kira's been adopted into a family of tree folk that live in the forest canopy. Though there are many tree folk, many tree folk, individual families care for their own and are politely distant from others. Kira, suffering from an unnamed PTSD, evades her traumatic memories by avoiding what she calls memory traps. But when the takers arrive at her new home in the forest, she has to face her trauma and attempt to make a community of the tree folk if they are to survive. If We Were Giants is a wonderful issue-based fantasy novel. It's great for fans of Kate DiCamillo, Counting by Sevens by Holly Sloan, Anything by Kathy Appelt, and Other Fantasy with a Heart. Next up, Beginner's Welcome by Cindy Baldwin. This is a realistic fiction, mostly. It's about Annie Lee. The death of her vivacious father was sudden and unexpected. And so was moving into a cramped apartment in Durham, North Carolina, and losing both of her best friends in the process. And so is trying to communicate with her rigid, grief-stricken mother. Throw in the start of sixth grade, a broken washing machine, and constant signs from her father, from shaving cream in the sink every morning to his favorite songs turning on, his, turning on on his record player, and life can be downright overwhelming. Annie and her mom are facing some financial struggles, so her mom works long hours at the Macy's downtown. And during afternoons alone, Annie secretly steals away from old and falling down neighborhood in North, North Durham to Brightleaf Square, a bright mall in a former tobacco warehouse where an elderly gentleman plays the piano for passersby. She's drawn in by his magical music, which sparks emotion tinged colors that people can, people can see when they need to. Annie Lee forms a fast friendship with the pianist Ray and she begins piano lessons with him. When she's again faced with losing someone she loves, Annie Lee must decide whether to shrug off her carefully constructed invisibility and face the world once again. This is a moving realistic fiction novel steeped in very believable magic. Next up, The Derby Daredevils, book one by Kit Rosewater. This one is called Kenzie Kickstarts a Team. This is the first in an illustrated series about growing up, and about roller derby. Fifth graders and best friends Kenzie and Shelly have always done everything together. They also share a dream to be on the same roller derby team and it's only 2,000 days until they turn 15 and can join the local rec league. But when tryouts for a new junior league are announced the girls no longer have to wait. But there is a catch. If Kenzilla and Bombshell as they're known in their roller derby world want to be on the same team, they need to try out as a team. The dynamic duo must find a way to expand to a fivesome, and introvert Kenzie has to accept that she must share outgoing Shelley with new people. There's no spoilers on how it all goes, but there is a book two already. And finally today, a wonderful folktale-based fantasy. It's called The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. It's about Yanka. She's 12 years old and she was discovered in a bear cave as a baby, but she spent her whole life dreaming about knowing who she really is. Although she's happy at home with her loving foster mother, she feels out of place in the village where the other children mock her for her unusual size and strength. So when Yanka wakes up one morning to find her legs have become bear legs, she knows she has no choice but to leave the village and find out who she really is. 
She has to find somewhere she truly belongs, so she ventures into the snow forest with her pet weasel, Mousetrap, in search of the truth about her past. This is a whimsical folklore-based fantasy. It's perfect for fans of The Girl Who Drank the Moon, Oddly Normal, The Witch Boy, and the Spirit Animal series. So there you go, four great brand new middle grade books. If you're a teen in the summer reading program here at Manlius Library, your code is HEART, capital H-E-A-R-T, HEART. Now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite painting techniques, pointillism. All you need is a, a paintbrush, a smallish round paintbrush, something to paint on, and some paint. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, as I said, one of my very favorite painting techniques. It's called pointillism, and it is, at its most basic, the use of dots to create art. All you need is something to paint on. I'm going to use a canvas, some paints. Acrylic paints, I think, work best with this, although you really could do pointillism with any kind of medium at all. You could use pencils or markers or pastels or watercolors, but I'm going to do acrylic paints, and some paint brushes. You want round, small, round paint brushes. You could use Q-tips. You could use pencil erasers. You could use anything that is round, fairly small, and will make a dot. I'm using small paint brushes because I want my dots to be pretty small. Okay, I've got my canvas and my brushes. The one thing I didn't show you that, we, that you do need is some water, of course, for your brushes and something to put your paints on. I've got a paper plate. So, pointillism, as I said, is basically using dots to create art. If you look it up online, there are lots of famous examples of pointillism. You can use it to make abstract art, or you could use it to make a design of something concrete. I like to use pointillism to make um, pretty designs. This would be fabulous if you did it on just plain white paper. You could create your own wrapping paper, or if you have cardstock, you could create the outside of a greeting card. You could use it to design some stationery. I'm gonna save the black for after. So, it is one of the most simple techniques to do, endlessly fun to practice, but it does take some practice to perfect it. You just get paint on your brush and make dots. One of the advantages of using something like a pencil or a marker or even a Q-tip in the paint is it's a lot easier to keep your dots the same size. I like to use paintbrushes though. not ones with fuzz in them. Okay. Let's see. I think I'll continue around. That paintbrush has fuzz in it, so I'm going to move on to this one. You could draw out a design on your card on your paper first, or you can freehand it like I'm doing and just do some kind of a pattern. One thing you have to watch out for is pushing too hard because you will do that. Like that, okay? That's not pointillism. 
might be pretty, but it's not going to listen. Okay. You could even go one color right into the next and into the next. You can also do this as sparsely or as completely as you want to. You could cover the entire surface with dots, which is what I usually do. But you could also just do a very spare design and make a lovely wrapping paper or greeting card. You could do flowers. You could do anything that is um, in your imagination. I hope you enjoyed today's Middle Grade Monday, that you have fun practicing with dots, making great art, and that you maybe found something good to read. Next week is the last of the summertime Middle Grade Mondays, but I will be back in the fall with lots of great new books to suggest, to, pardon me, to suggest, and uh, some Middle Grade Monday fun. Stay tuned. Immediately following this, I have some announcements to make about what's coming up in September and beyond. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Lori and I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library. You can find me here every Monday on the Manlius Library YouTube channel for more middle grade Monday, more middle grade book suggestions. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Happy reading. And now I have some programming notes for you for what's coming up. As fun as it's been, my summer virtual programming, Middle Grade Monday, Teen Book Tuesday, Create with Lori, and Lunchtime Poetry will come to an end the week of August 31st. So the week leading up to Labor Day will be the last week of summer programming. I'll be taking a couple weeks off from programming starting the Labor Day weekend. That's to give me some planning time and also to give you all some time to settle into new and different fall and back to school schedules. But never fear, I will be back with virtual programming beginning the week of September 21st. Some of the programming is gonna stay the same. Some of it's gonna change a little bit. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Middle Grade Monday is coming back. Monday's at four. It will focus entirely on middle grade books, primarily grades four to seven. I'm taking the craft part out. More on that in just a minute. Teen Book Tuesday will start up again, just as it's been, maybe even better. Tuesdays at four here on the YouTube channel. It'll continue to be a source for new and fantastic book suggestions and other bookish news from the teen room. For example, we just got in the audiobook of Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. If you're a Hunger Games fan, this is the fourth book in the series, which is actually a prequel, and I talk about it in a previous Teen Book Tuesday. We also just got Midnight Sun, the Twilight Saga from Edward's point of view. This one has a little bit of a wait list, so get yourself over to our website and put a hold on it so you can get your copy. And don't forget, we have several teen Kindles. These are loaded, preloaded, with lots and lots of great young adult books and audiobooks and some games and other apps. So don't forget that those are available for you to call and request for curbside service. I have a new program starting on Thursday, September 24th. It's called Take and Make, and it's for teens and tweens ages 10 and up. It'll post every Thursday at 4 p.m. on YouTube. It's going to replace Create with Lori. So it'll be crafts and art activities, but you'll be able to register for a kit. Come and get it via our curbside service, and then craft, paint, sew. In other words, make art with me, but at your convenience. The kits will be limited in number and available until they're gone. The program will be pre-recorded and available at any time after posting. And the kits will include everything you need to make the project, with the exception of some common household items like scissors, pens and pencils, and occasionally some glue. Lunchtime Poetry is taking a hiatus, but never fear, it will be back for National Poetry Month in April, and maybe even for some special occasions between now and then. And looking forward to later in the fall, I do have some new things I'm working on for October and November. 
First Fridays will be a monthly program starting in October with something different every month for teens and tweens, or anyone really. Maybe a scavenger hunt or an escape experience or a trivia contest. I'll present it via YouTube the first Friday of every month at 9 a.m. So stay tuned for details soon about the first, first Friday. Teen trivia will start on October 7th. It's going to be every other Wednesday night at 7.30 on Facebook Live using Kahoot. You'll be able to compete individually or on teams for prize packs that you can pick up via our curbside service. And then in November, I know that's a long way away, but starting November 1st, Monday in a mug. So alternate evenings, 7.30 on Facebook Live. I will show teens or anyone how to make things in a mug using basic ingredients and a microwave. I'll provide a list of ingredients ahead of time and it'll be posted on our calendar. So watch for details about that. I think we're going to start with cake in a mug. In addition to my programming, Miss Wendy, of course, has a great lineup of programming for the younger set and there's lots coming for adults as well. So stay tuned for that. We're also working on some different resources to help out with the challenges this new school year will bring for everyone. So stay tuned for more announcements about that. In the meantime, remember to take advantage of our curbside service. You can reserve and check out books, audiobooks, movies, even binge boxes, and so much more. Visit our website at manliestlibrary.org for more details and to make a curbside appointment. I hope you've found some small pleasure in the programming we've offered this summer. Enjoy the rest of your August. If you have any questions or comments about any of this or suggestions for future programs or services that we could provide, please send me an email at lfinger at manliestlibrary.org. I'll see you in the fall. Be cool, stay well, and happy reading.